Hi, this is Henry Hoffman with Sabo. Today I'm going to show you a video example of combining reciprocal EMG triggered stimulation with the SaboFlex. The first thing you'll do is you'll apply two stimulation electrodes to the affected wrist and finger extensors. And as a reminder, with reciprocal EMG triggered stimulation, channel A is responsible for the stimulation, and channel B is responsible for biofeedback. So you'll identify the location for the wrist and finger extensors, and you'll apply the adhesive electrodes. Once you do this, you'll turn on the unit, and you will determine the appropriate milliamps. At this point, you will increase the current being delivered to the wrist and finger extensors until you get a suitable motor response. Once you're happy with the electrical stimulation applied to the wrist and finger extensors, it's time to address the flexors. As a reminder, channel B is responsible for biofeedback. In this case, wrist and finger flexors will be the biofeedback component, and you'll apply the three EMG electrodes to the flexors. There will be a blue, a yellow, and a black. After you apply the EMG electrodes to the flexors, it's time to confirm the placement. You'll turn on the unit, go to the EMG assessment mode. You can choose line graph or bar graph display passively stretch the wrist and finger flexors and have the patient squeeze or activate the finger flexors. By looking at the display, you can see if the signal is strong and that will tell you if the EMG electrode placement is suitable. Once you have determined that you are happy with the EMG electrode placement on the flexors as well as the electrical stimulation electrode placement on the extensors, consider Coban or some other type of wrapping mechanism to protect the electrodes prior to donning the SaboFlex. Now you're going to apply the SaboFlex over the Coban wrap. Be careful not to shift the electrodes when applying the forearm shell. Turn the electrical stimulation back on for the wrist and finger extensors now that the SaboFlex is on. After you have the electrical stimulation level set, you will also set the activation and deactivation thresholds. And then you'll test to make sure that the patient can exceed the activation threshold and when they relax and drop the ball, they can fall below the deactivation threshold. As you can see here, we're doing tabletop crate right and crate left. The unit has a belt clip, so you can attach it to the patient if you'd like. Or you can have the unit in front of the patient so they can hear as well as see the line graph or bar graph display. As the patient goes to grasp and release, the patient will hear the word relax. At that point, they'll deactivate their flexors and then a stim will kick in. Of course, you can make adjustments as needed or use the auto threshold feature and set the patient up to do independent SaboFlex treatment.